Hey everybody, Chris Brown here. I'm fortunate to be joined by Yusuf Ahmed from UCSF, Complex PCI and Coronary Operator. I have this case I was hoping to show you, Yusuf. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Looking yeah. forward to seeing your case. So I'm gonna show you my case here. So we got this guy, middle 70s, comes in, acute decompensated heart failure. My heart failure team tunes him up after he got an outside hospital angiogram. Um, he was transferred here. He's got these, this coronary anatomy. Uh, he has a CTO of the right. So we, um, his EDP had improved, but we went ahead and we went with mechanical circulatory support here. Uh, I don't know about you, maybe you can comment on this, but for everything that we do when we're working on the left side and there's a sort of makes it a single remaining conduit because of a CTO of the right, um, we generally support these patients even if we've been able to improve their EDP. I don't know how you feel about that if you try and get away without that here or what you would do. Yeah, I feel pretty similar. You know, they, patients don't need to have one adverse factor for me to go to support. So it's not just, you know, bad anatomy or just low EF or just last remaining vessel. But I think once you start to accumulate adverse factors, so I can see just in this one shot a ton of calcium. So this is probably going to be some form of calcium modification. You said the right secluded, looks like the circ secluded, so it's last remaining vessel. And then he present, patient presented with decompensated heart failure. That always gives me more pause as well. When they've presented decompensated, even when you've tuned them up medically in the hospital as far as you can, I feel like their risk for decompensation in the procedure is really, really high compared to sort of a stable, fully compensated outpatient where I might feel like the hemodynamics are going to be more forgiving. So I think this for me would be support even without any extra information. So I wouldn't... You know, even if a right heart cath was reassuring, with this type of you know combination of factors, I'd be using support. Yeah, I think that the best, the biggest point there, and one that I should heed a hundred percent of the time, that you made was, you know, that if they come in decompensated heart failure, even if you compensate them, their risk for re-decompensation is quite quite high. So, uh, in any case. You know, we're going to do this left main. We got to do this LAD. We're going to do the diagonal. I don't want to do the diagonal, but I kind of feel like it's a big lateral territory. It's got many branches itself, so I feel somewhat obligated to treat it. I'm going to try and stop before all these septals come off. I mean, this septal arcade, I want to use this as a retrograde conduit, and the rest of the artery looks kind of okay. I don't know what you think about that. We went with a, a Takeru balloon, actually. We escalated Takeru balloons because we were able to cross. I could have roted this, I suppose, but we were able to ultimately deliver a lithotripsy balloon, um, which is what you see me fluorostoring here. And we are able to deliver it to both directions, interestingly, with just pragmatic predilation. I was pretty sure we were going to end up having to do lithotripsy, and I wasn't going to be able to deliver this. But I somehow managed to get it to go. Um, in is any that case, a used lithotripsy balloon? And say that not, again? Is that a used, is it yeah, the same? that's a used lithotripsy balloon. What I did was, they come with this stylet, and I put the stylet back in, and it has a little plastic sleeve, and I kind of work it back into the plastic sleeve and almost rewrap the balloon. Oh, I know that sounds kind of goofy, but it actually works for me, um, and I've been doing it for a little bit of time now, and I feel like I've used it enough to where I can feel confident telling other people to use it now. So, you know, we've done some plaque modification. You can kind of see that. You, know, you get a little rent in the media there because there's a little tortuosity in the calcium and the LED. I'm already surfing that, some septal to no man's land there, apparently. Um, doing a little more balloon angioplasty. Trying to do some imaging to understand where I can land or what I got to do. Just doing some more pragmatic work after that, that um, IVIS. And you can see there's kind of this weird takeoff, this is a usual caudal view here. It's like 30 AP caudal. You see how the, LA, the LED doesn't come off straight. It almost like the cert comes off straight and the LED makes this aggressive jog upward yeah. before it goes out. Um, it doesn't appear that way from this view, but it definitely appears that way from the other view. So I went ahead and said, well, let's take the longest NC I can and just really bang this out. <clears throat> And I was able to deliver an NC to this diagonal pretty well. And this is now the middle diagonal. Yeah, and so, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, I've, I've done plaque modification. I got good, I feel like I got good expansion. We're gonna be able to stent this. I'm um, just trying to get some views on my circ here, just make some work of it. 
And then I try to deliver this stent to the diagonal. Now it's a pretty long stent, and it's got to make that jog that you saw through the calcium. And I thought, since I got a used non-compliant balloon across it, and you saw me fluoro store that, that this will be fine, it's going to go. You can see I'm already in a bit of a pickle here, yeah. because I've tried to advance it, it's gotten stuck, I've tried to pull it back, and you can see that it has started to crinkle on itself a bit. Yeah, um, some separation there. And leave, it, leave the edge of the balloon. So now I'm, I'm like, all right, man, what are we going to do here? This stent is not big enough to work in the left main, obviously. Um, but I have the option, because I have a wire next to it, to just crush this out of my way. You know, so I said to myself, well, that's what we should try and do. I should probably, probably just deploy this, secure the ostium of the diagonal, and then just crush everything else out of the way, um, you know, going behind it. I'd probably take a microcatheter behind it, dilate, dilate, dilate more, and then put a stent in the LED that can be expanded to the right size for the left main. I don't know what you would do with this crumpled mess now, but that was my goal. I bet you were very happy you had support in yeah, I mean, interestingly, the flow wasn't really compromised. We took a couple of test pictures, and the flow was actually okay. We'd done pretty good plaque modifications, so there was some space, but I was very, very annoyed right now yeah. is probably the best way I'll put it. And so um, I attempted to deploy this stent, and the balloon ruptured at two atmospheres. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so now I'm in a, a real bad way. And so I try to work through my algorithm of what can I do. So I put a balloon in the LED and tried to balloon it free a little bit to see if I could pull it sort of out, if you will. Did the balloons rupture and the balloon is stuck? Or yeah. Just... And then the next thing happened. So the shaft of the stent delivery system fractured and broke off about mid-guide. <laughs> so I was pretty stoked. Um, <laughs> you just fetched something out. I just saw something. I was trying to get this guide extension to swallow this, yeah. um, the the balloon shaft, if you will. Yeah. But it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to swallow this. And then, so what we ended up doing, though, at the end of this floral run, which is the part that you saw, is we ended up trapping. I don't know how you would have done this. Your, done how you would have done this. But I, what I ended up doing was, I ended up being able to trap the. I was trying to get a balloon down in the guide extension to see if I could like balloon assisted track the guide yeah. over. You can see the whole thing kind of swoop out there. Yeah. Um, I was trying to balloon assisted track the guide extension over that stent delivery system to see if I could kind of swallow it and trap it. I couldn't get it to the balloon delivery system up farther because of the size of the everything that was in the way, but yeah. I was able to trap the old um, stent delivery system with the balloon inside the guide extension farther back. I just, I, got, I just got lucky, really, that the guide extension had slid over the fractured uh, stent delivery system by me essentially forcing it in, more or less. Um, and then I was able to pin it and then pull it, the whole thing came free, probably because I had ballooned so much in the LED already, uh, trying to free this all up. But um, you managed to get out the fractured portion Yep. and everything that was in the coronary. You got it. Yeah. Well, wow, that's remarkable. Yeah. As we say, better to be lucky than yeah. good. So anyway, we were able to deliver this stent, which I synnated for the, only the purpose of just proving to people that I was able to deliver a different stent. And Did you not... do anything different in between, like more? Um... So the di what I did was I took the guide extension all the way to the ostium of the diagonal where it bifurcates with the LED wire and then just delivered the stent that way. So it didn't have to go through that jog in yeah. the beginning of the LED. Now, you know, I thought modifying that plaque would be sufficient to deliver things, in particular since that balloon went, but it, the stent really did not like that calcium. I don't know about if you would have just done this up front. I, you know, in retrospect, I would wanted to do this up front. Yeah, I mean, it looked like you were in a great position on the yeah. Super 4. There's some tortuosity to the LED, but, you know, probably underappreciated in the cranial projections, but, yeah. you know, you've been able to deliver you know, big NC, long NCs, which is normally the best test of being able to deliver the stem. And you also haven't had issues delivering into the main LED through that tortuosity with lithotripsy nope. and stuff like that. So, and that's yeah. what I thought. I was like, well, I went into the more tortuous part with a lithotripsy balloon, 
why would it matter if I went into the less tortuous part? But I guess that outer wall or that that wire bias into the calcium. I do wonder sometimes when I fracture calcium, if I make these little tiny crevices that everything kind of um, falls into sometimes. Because sometimes I swear my wires get more stuck once yep. we've done lithotripsy than when we haven't. But you, you're right to say that I was pretty happy that I had support because I kind of got to smooth or glide right through this to the degree that you can after I was able to recover from being really annoyed at myself about the other thing. And then we went ahead and did our nano crush usual stuff here. We stay short of the left main LED here so we can nano crush this too. It has a very weird angulation to it. Um, and I, I really sort of argued with myself. I thought about whether I should just stent this circ into the left main and just put a little short stent where that little turn is, kind of almost making it a T here but in, in a sort of backward fashion to what we're used to. Um, but I couldn't quite convince myself uh, to make the LED with its huge diagonal the donor system in this entire sort of bifurcation. I don't know what you think. If you would have just done it and said, screw it, it doesn't really matter, metal will get to metal and it'll be all teed up, or how you would want, how would you do it? I still, you, I mean, I still treat the LED as the main branch in basically all of these. I understand some of the rationale behind not for some of the anatomies that we treat in some of the bifurcation techniques but i do it for two reasons one is you know own individual comfort to not you know to treat the led as the main branch and number two you know that was still the way it was done in all the trials and so i think until we do some studies and you know prove that that's a, a good alternative i still tend to treat the led as the main branch yeah, I'm with you. I think the, the big thing there that you said is true. It's how it was done in all the, the DK trials. And so if we're going to say that there's something superior, and we know that there's a geometry issue between the donor and the main branch. I mean, the, there's a reason that the circ ostium restenosis first and left main bifurcations. And then it's because of the way that we treat the geometry. And I'd, again, I'd much rather have a relatively small circumflex restenosis than this huge LAD um, with, uh, you know, a reasonably sized diagonal, et cetera. And, uh, so we did our usual thing. We did a DK um, or a nano crush. Did some kissing balloons to post dilate this stuff up. Uh, let's get to the finals here. But you know, we think we got a really good result. He's got much better flow to his right now. Uh, he's got a couple of weeks, and then he's going to come back, and we're going to fix his right coronary. Oh yeah, all the um, branches are. are yeah. You wouldn't know from the end shot all the anguish you went through to. I know it doesn't really look that. I mean, it, it it looks calcified, and there's a lot of metal, and you know he's got some better looking arteries now. But you wouldn't have known the 25 minutes of me trying to fish that thing out. And I thought about all the other things in the algorithm, you know, the wires to entrap that stent. But everything about the way that that stent acted, um, to me, I needed to smash it out of the way and just stent around it if I wasn't able to get it out because it just wasn't in a, a fortuitous position, in particular since the stent balloon decided to rupture, um, yeah. which yeah, is That just, was the extra wrinkle. I thought yeah. the big part of the case was just going to be getting stuck. But the fact that it then ruptured is, is the real extra challenge. Yeah. And then when it broke, the shaft of it broke in the middle of the guide. That didn't help me. And I, you know, the, it ended up, it seems like it was not an issue that throughout all of that, there was never compromise to the LED. The whole no, I mean, there was in the sense that, I mean, there was a thing blocking it, but his LED was probably so bad to start with. He was somewhat ischemically preconditioned, you yeah. know, from those first shots. And so having this metal there, I mean, he's appropriately anticoagulated. His ACT is over 300. I don't know what you guys use, but, you know, because we use such high ACTs and CTOs, I kind of got used to it. And I sort of favor it in the sense that it buys us a little bit of room to to work and do the things that we want to do without thrombosing something. Of course, uh, we reverse all these people at the end as long as they've been appropriately preloaded with antiplatelets and are on antiplatelet therapy. But while we're working, I really like the ACT to be more like 300. Yeah, I'm the same as you actually. When I get the ACT and it's like in the low 300s, I'm giving a little extra heparin and then... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what, why the, when I said I bet you're glad you had support in, was just in case when you were trying to get this thing figured out, the LED flow got disturbed, etc. It just allows you to, you know, that time, the 15 or 20 minutes to, you know, take oh, a break. It bought me a, a huge relief. I was like, well, I mean, I can work. He's stable. Let's let's yeah. figure out how to get this out. And hope, you know, I'm going through my mind. What's my algorithm? How do I get this out? Does he need to go to surgery? He's not really a surgery candidate. That's why he's on our table anyway. Um, but you know, 
I think if I wouldn't have been able to get it to go the way that it did, I would have gone with the stented out of the way uh, approach in this one. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And um, thanks for uh, going through this with me. Great case. Yeah. Thank you for having me.